The population was filled with fear and despair after the demon king invaded a nation that was already on the verge of collapse. Despite this, there were heroes among them, such as the Melvinger family, who were fearless and resolved to make their mark on history. After years of war and sacrifice, peace and happiness were eventually restored. However, the Melvinger family was once again brought to the brink of collapse when all of their leaders since the last battle had passed away, leaving only the last two descendants. Elric Melvinger, one of the two, suffered from a disease that robbed him of his magic, but he persisted in trying to find a cure without causing any worry to his sister. Elric faced expulsion from the academy due to his dismal grades in practical courses, but he excelled in theoretical ones. Despite having a talent for detecting and comprehending mana, it was meaningless if he couldn't use magic. In his contemplation before his grandfather's statue, Elric acknowledged his challenges but resolved to overcome them to restore his family's glory. Elric overhears scornful comments from fellow students deriding him as a disgrace to his family. Feeling unable to tolerate this any longer, he confronts them in a confrontational manner to advise them of his close relationship with assistant professor Sean. Hearing this, the students retreat to avoid rubbing shoulders with the professor. Later on that day, a man shocks Elric by attacking him and slamming his head onto the desk with a single blow. Upon turning to face the attacker, Elric realizes that it is Sean Nemister, who is the third son from one of the six royal hexagram families. Sean reprimands Elric for his past actions and pleads with him to stop using Sean's name to bully other students. Despite the fall of Elric's own family, Sean has been one of his few supporters and invites Elric to join his group of explorers. They have discovered an ancient dragon nest considered to be the origin of all magic. Sean believes that the map in Elric's possession could help find a cure for his illness, as well as hold the key to ensuring that Elric's expulsion from the academy could be overturned, if an artifact is found during the journey. Overjoyed by the news, Elric bursts into laughter, and points out that the map is incorrect due to a circle marking on the document. Startled by this revelation, Sean uses magic to transport them both to a holographic projection of the new location Elric provided in order to keep it secret from others who may be listening, Elric clarifies that the presence of a crack, formed by the intersection of two layers and abundant mana flow from these cracks, would naturally suggest that the dragon nest is located in that area. However, Elric points out that due to the underground water flow through the cracks, mana does not accumulate in that spot which means it's an unlikely place for a dragon to reside. Sean argues with this, citing the detection of mono wavelengths from a dragon in the vicinity, indicating that the nest must be present there. Elric confidently denies having denied the existence of a dragon's nest, instead indicating another location on the map called Caragal Cave, where he believes the nest might be located. Encouraged by Sean's trust, they both approach the dean's office to propose this alternative location. The dean, however, disapproves of their idea since he had already conducted research and prepared a report regarding the dragon nest's location, and their proposal contradicts his findings, the dean tries to intimidate Sean by triggering his assassin drive, but Elric calmly walks into the office and takes responsibility for the proposed idea, the dean ridicules Elric's deduction. Stating that he has no evidence to support his claim, undaunted, Elric confronts the dean, asserting that it's not a conjecture but a proven fact that even a toddler could understand. Sean is left questioning Elric's sanity when he observes his friend's boldness in mocking the dean. Despite this, the dean is amused by Elric's lack of magical ability and offers him a wager, resources to assemble an exploration team to test his theories, with his family's relic at stake if he fails. As they embark on the expedition, Sean confronts Elric about why he risked his family's inheritance. Elric assures him that he has everything under control and boldly declares that he would rather the headmaster bet his life instead. Sean recalls Elric's reputation as the disgrace of the Melvinger family and the worst of the Melvinger family, which he earned for his inability to wield magic. However, Elric proved his mettle by standing up to a powerful noble who insulted him, and though he was suspended for violating the school's policy on equality, he earned the respect and fear of his peers. Sean is amazed as he witnesses Elric taking out a book on strengthening arts from the Beast King during their journey towards the expedition. Possession of such a book could result in severe consequences, even the possibility of getting burned alive. When asked why someone as wealthy as Elric is studying such a book, he responds with a grin, explaining that he's hoping to find a cure for his illness. 
Elric then shares a brief history of the Beast King, who had invaded the Empire with his army of Beast Men and exploited his body-strengthening arts to gain a significant advantage. However, the Empire was able to defeat the Beast King and built a wall, resulting in the lost art of body strengthening. Despite this, Elric has managed to recover the art but is still unaware of its application to his body. During their trip, they encounter Revel, a principal investigator from the Institute who has been sent by the Dean to assist with their expedition. Although Revel greets them politely, Elric and Sean sense hostility from him and his group. This doesn't bother Elric, as he has already obtained the Lord of the Blue Sky's armor and Johanna's breath, both of which are exceptional magical items that would not be accessible to students under normal circumstances. The Dean had provided Elric with the resources required for his expedition, which he utilized to acquire these magical items. However, upon discovering this, the Dean became furious and scolded the student who had loaned the equipment to Elric. Despite this, the Dean still has a malicious smile on his face, as he no longer cares about whether Elric succeeds or fails in his expedition. He is determined to obtain the magic pendant and will do whatever it takes to ensure that Elric does not come out alive. When Elric's expedition crew gets at their target, they find a huge door that is decorated with a dragon and other inscriptions. Elric stops them as they all prepare to shove it. He warns them that it can be risky and advises them not to act before doing some research. Revel, however, disregards this advice and carelessly touches the door. A thunderous explosion is followed by an all out assault on the expedition team that is accompanied by cries of pain and anguish. Sean sends out barriers to protect them right away and begs Elric to figure out a solution. Eirik begins scrambling the door's code, and he successfully disables the trap, saving them from certain death. However, the threat persists as further explosions and assaults take place, leaving several supporting actors dismembered. The party turns on its defense mechanisms and waits for Elric to turn off the traps once more. It's not as easy this time, and the threat keeps growing until Elric is compelled to don the Lord of the Blue Sky's armor. Revel wonders how Eirik acquired such an armor as he stares at him in astonishment, Elric buys some time and effectively disables the trap with the armor. Various valuables, including literature and armor for dragons, are revealed as the door opens. The gang gives Elric praise for saving them before entering the hall to look around. Elric questions whether the traps were the last test or whether there is anything more to it. Sean congratulates Elric, adding that he won't be able to be called worthless and that his family will prosper once more as a result of the accomplishment of this operation. Revel, on the other hand, flashes a vile grin and convinces Sean to accompany him to a dragon corpse. It is made obvious to Eirik by one of Revel's lieutenants that although there are no ill feelings between them, finishing their task is crucial. When Eirik is about to burn the underlings, they cast a fire spell, but just as he is about to strike, a blinding flash of light stops his path and kills them all. The carcass of a dragon then attacks the group, inflicting pain and evoking pleas from the survivors, Elric explains that the skeleton needs time to prepare since he intends to murder everyone in one blow. He orders them to concentrate and form a line of defense while turning on their shields, Elric is warned by Sean to act quickly or else. Elric notices cobwebs blocking his vision as his pendant begins to glow, causing him a headache. Thanks to his improved vision, he avoids being attacked by a Spartan. They turn back toward the exit door to flee, but some of the exploratory team are easily stabbed, resulting in agonized screams. Elric recognizes the assailants as the mythical creatures that defended the dragon. Elric promptly commands the others to follow him, and because of his foresight, they are able to safely make it to the entrance. Eirik exits the hall, confident in his win. However, he turns around to realize that Revel is going to be attacked by a spar toy after hearing a cry for aid behind him. He returns to save Revel with the aid of Eirik after forgetting his escape due to his agitated state. While Revel flees the threat, the sparrow keeps moving. Thankfully, the door has begun to close by itself. Sean, who is still running, turns to see whether they are still being pursued. The last thing he sees is his insane buddy smiling at him from behind, urging him to keep running, Elric is pulled along by Sean as he returns. He's concerned since the door totally closes, though. After Elric had been suspended seven years prior, Sean contacted him, introduced himself, and extended an invitation to be friends. Sean became despondent as this scene repeatedly played out, and one night the students were given a test in which they had to go from point A to point B without the use of magic. 
Before an unexpected covert attack that left Sean injured and perilously close to a cliff caught him off guard, Sean was easily leading the pack. The kids standing behind him mocked him for his position and suggested that he utilize magic to free himself. Realizing how vulnerable he is, Eirik summons Johanna's breath to defend himself. Elric substitutes the mana requirement for the breath of Johanna with some of his longevity, and as a result, he begins the fight while different Spartacus are being burnt. Elric speculates that the skeleton, namely the lance that has become embedded in the bones, may contain the answer to the test. That being the case, he mounts the skeleton and raises the lance. A horned man and a dragon engage in a bloody battle after raising the lance. Since he has finally discovered a fresh vessel that would assist him in releasing the seal that is keeping him confined, the guy glances at Elric with excitement. He will rule the planet with the aid of that new vessel. He is interrupted by the dragon, who addresses him as Demon King Mephistopheles and announces that the king shall be interred there beside him. These revelations astound Elric. Mephistopheles makes fun of the dragon because despite being hidden with him a thousand years ago, a large vessel has now arrived. As soon as Elric says it, demonic energy starts to flow through his body. Elric worries if he'll pass away so quickly that he begins to recall the past as he is on the verge of passing away, including the sacrifices made by his grandpa and the entire Melvinger family while fighting monsters that left him and his sister all by themselves. In doing so, he exposed the real nature of the Magic Tower, the Imperial family, and the vassal families that had abandoned him and his sister. He attempted to take everything that belonging to him and his sister, even the person he relied on the most and in whom he had the most faith. Elric was abandoned by the person who was meant to treat his ailment when he stood up for what was rightfully his. But everything is done now. Elric cannot fail now since he is a Melvinger. Elric's body begins to shine, shocking the Demon King, and voices begin to be heard inside of his mind as the family pendant changes. Elric is transported to a different location and meets up with family members who identify themselves as the students who sought to master medical magic. But since they were tainted by the demons, many of them did immense harm to the planet. They created a strategy to consume the demons after admitting their errors and making amends for the past. But since the demons constantly return, their heirs are obligated to carry out their last will and testament. After the academics have finished speaking, Elric awakens in a bed next to Sean, who is sobbing and chastising him for endangering himself. Sean was in charge of sending the rescue crew to bring Elric back. Elric says, thanks, but Sean doesn't respond. Instead, he approaches Elric and demands to know why the hell he has become so tall. Elric connects his development to what took place in the cave. Sean, who is filled with uncertainty, asks him what occurred but Elric says he can't yet tell him. Sean explains to him that his family has closed up the cave's entrance to keep other families from breaking in and taking its treasures. Elric recalls what happened and knows the Dean's genuine motives since the cave was his from the minute he found it. Elric is questioned by Sean about his current plans, but he makes no response. Instead, he requests that Sean disseminate the notion that he has been gravely injured. Later, when the Dean and many of his henchmen attempt to enter the hospital, a guard from the Nemister family bars their way and informs them that Elric is unconscious. Eirik laughs at the Dean from inside the hospital, and when he walks out, he forgets what occurred in the cave. The greatest authority among old dragons, a dragon's heart, may be felt within of him for some reason. Despite Mephistopheles' rage, Elric seems unconcerned. He makes the decision to refer to him going forward as his pet, Memphis, the Demon King, who represents the darkness in ancient times when gods controlled the universe, had four servants, death, lunacy, fornication, and the original sin. He is now connected to Mephistopheles, the youngster who was intended to be Memphis' vessel has absorbed his demonic energies, and Memphis is dying of wrath because he treats the boy like a pet. But for the time being, he is helpless since all that is left of him is a sliver of demonic energy that keeps him from dying. Elric's future is filled with entertainment now that he is aware that the necklace has the power to consume demons, but before doing anything else, he chooses to visit a remote location and verify his concerns. Elric uses his new magic ability in a place of peace and quiet to demonstrate the removal of his blocking ailment. Additionally, the power he wields is not just any magic, it is magic used by dragons. Memphis is in awe of Ulric's strength as she observes it. Now, Elric will make everyone repent somewhere for their actions of betraying the Melvinger family and disobeying him. 
Sean is under pressure from journalists who question Elric's alleged coma and query him about his ownership of the cave.